Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, in this video, I figured I'd sit down, see what the Gibson Mod Collection has to offer for us, and just geek out and check out some weird, wild guitars, okay? Let's get into it. So what is going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. My name is Ram, a guitar player here on YouTube, and I want to start this video off by saying congrats to Gibson for figuring out a way to uh, to market these awesome, wild, weird, you know, one-off guitars, man. These things have been selling like crazy, and I'm just like super stoked on everybody who can afford these things, man, because you're really getting an awesome, wild, one-off guitar for sure. But uh, Gibson figured out a way to, uh, you know, make these things, you know, a hot commodity. I was, I was wrong. I didn't think these things would sell like hotcakes, but, you know, they certainly are. Um, and you know they are cool man so I guess if you have a you know a ton of disposable income in you know you can certainly get a really cool guitar so I uh, just want to put that out there man it's kind of cool it's kind of you know unique and just an interesting thing that Gibson's doing plus I really don't see any other companies doing it man so you know they're doing something a little bit different a little left to center right so with that being said man let's dive on in I have checked these out briefly I have scrolled through and I've seen some that I really really like and ones I really want to dive into and see what exactly is going on um, but yeah man I just figured I'd just you know sit down and hang out with you guys talk about some weird guitars so let's start man one that really sticks out to me first and foremost is the 68 Les Paul custom reissue VOS $5,200 <laughs> man that's expensive um, you know visually it's a gorgeous guitar man um, yeah, I mean, it's insane, right? Black Beauty Les Pauls are insane. They're so cool, man. This one has some open coil 68 custom bucker pickups, a Bigsby B7 vibrato, and a uh, roller bridge with a vibramate, whatever that is. Who knows, right? Yeah, I mean, it's an insane guitar, dude. It's also an insane price tag, but regardless, man, somebody will buy this thing. It looks pretty sick, dude. Relatively clean. There's one small ding there and I mean the binding does have a little bit of imperfections you know people certainly have their opinions on all that um, but hey man it's kind of a cool unique one-off guitar right speaking of unique one-off guitars man look at this thing <laughs> a 2021 Firebird custom in red sparkle finish so the only thing different is the sparkly finish um, and I'll say right off the bat um, before I go any further this is not me trying to compete with any other channel or, or mu musician on the internet thinking that like I'm showing you something before anybody or anything like that. This is just me and you hanging out. Um, I have had some comments on my videos in the past saying like, oh, X channel already showed this to us. You know, you didn't find this first. I'm not saying I ever did. Um, you know, we can all get along just fine. We don't have to compete, right? So I just want to put that out there. This is not me like trying to like be first or anything like that. I'm just hanging out, all right? So with that being said, this guitar it's pretty sick, man. Um, it kind of reminds me of like, I think there's like an LTD or something like that that looks like this. I may be off on that, but I feel like ESP LTD has like a sparkly red Firebird type of guitar. I know they have a white one, um, but if you want the real deal at 4,400 bucks, <laughs> this is your guitar, man. One thing I really love about the Firebird Customs, and I wish they were more tangible and um, affordable on like the production guitars, is they the production guitars have the mini humbuckers, and it's very hard to find ones that I have the regular size humbuckers, and I really wish we could have more of those. That way we could like mod them and put our own pickups in there or whatever. Um, but the customs, you know, certainly do that very, very well. And yeah, man, this is a gorgeous guitar, dude. This guitar right here, the standard 50s guitar, this is something that I can get behind. I actually really think this makes sense and is a um, reasonable price point. For uh, 2,300 bucks, you can get a 50 standard Les Paul with just some blacked out hardware, some black plastics. I think that makes sense, man. Like they're not upcharging it; they're they're selling it at a decreased price. And uh, one thing I want to say, man, like <laughs> before I go any further, whose job is it to do this? Like who's sitting around at the Gibson plant or whatever? And like you know, it's like you know what? Today my job is to put black plastics on this '50s standard Les Paul. Like who's doing that? And who's the supervisor telling that worker, <laughs> hey, this is your task of the day? It's a cool job. It's like a dream job. Like just kind of just like messing around with guitars and seeing like. What would happen if, if I put black on this guitar? What would happen? I don't know. I just It's like a funny thing. Like somebody's sitting at, you know, at their workstation and thinking of like, you know what? I'm going to do this today. Just a funny thing. But anyway, man, this guitar looks cool. And I think the aesthetic looks pretty cool too, dude. Um, you know, the blacked out hardware or blacked out plastic, excuse me, against like the cherry sunburst. That looks cool. And again, the price point makes sense to me. 
So this one right here is definitely my favorite of all the ones we've checked out so far. Next, we have AES35 Transparent Gold. What an awesome finish, man. Um, funny enough, you know that reel I did where I'm playing an Epiphone, Epiphone ES335 Gold Top at Guitar Center? That is now my most popular video on this channel. <laughs> It's like um, it's it's like slowly but surely reaching close to a million views in like a month. It's wild. Um, so I kind of have a soft spot for this kind of guitar now, and I should probably pick up an Epiphone as a way to like celebrate that silly little moment in time. But anyway, man, we have a transparent gold. We have a Gibson P94. Yep, P94 in the bridge. I'm a big fan of single coil slash P90 pickups, especially since I played the Jared James Nichols. Um, and also too, he has a gold guitar and I'm really, really starting to dig gold guitars a lot more because of that. This right here, this is gorgeous, man. Satin appears to be a satin neck, regardless, just an, a natural mahogany neck against that transparent gold finish. That is gorgeous, man. Really unique guitar. I love that so much, dude. And I can't really tell if that's satin or not. It doesn't look like a giant you know coat of gloss on there you know what i mean so regardless man that is a gorgeous guitar it's a little expensive um but then again i just feel like es-335s are expensive because they're like hard to make right um yeah 2700 bucks not the end of the world 58 standard reissue 4600 dollars modifications include burst bucker burst bucker one in the neck burst bucker two in the bridge cream back plates and black speed knobs again just <laughs> <laughs> just black knobs on the guitar again whose job is it to say hey my task for today before i go to lunch before i you know i clock out whatever my task of the day is to put black knobs on this les paul it's a great job man i love that who's doing that i want that job it's just crazy how I'm like this guitar looks identical to this one but like they're double in price now let's get into the guitars that i'm really a fan of and the ones that i really really want to talk about starting off with another guitar to me that makes sense is this 70s Flying V. Now they cost about $2,000 brand new stock. This has a premium of 100 bucks and I think this is cool, man. They blacked out all the hardware and they put a cream perloid pickguard on it. This makes sense to me. Blacked out nickel hardware with an awesome Flying V, dude. Like black diamond pickups, dude, that looks so good, dude. This looks like a, like an ESP E2 or something like that. It makes sense to me, especially as being a metal fan, a metal player on this channel, right? On, you know, what I do, we play metal predominantly. Um, this makes sense to me. So I'm a big fan of this one. This one looks really cool, man. Binding's a little rough on the underside. Oh, look at that, dude. I didn't even notice that. Is that it looks like one of those lace pickups. Is that how they all look? I wish they would take a closer picture up of the pickups. Yeah, it kind of looks like... It's hard to tell. I mean, this is a terrible quality picture, but kind of looks like the lace pickups, like the burner pickups, or whatever they're called, where like it's like multicolored. And I could be off on that, but that looks kind of cool to me, man. Yeah, this one is definitely my favorite so far. Now taking the place of that standard 50s with the black plastics. Les Paul Modern, $3,300. $500 premium. What'd they do to this one? Black Diamond 57 Classic pickups, hand-wired, okay. Custom Stinger, that's cool. Um, I had a Modern back in the day. I really didn't like it. I didn't like the weight relief, and I didn't like the asymmetrical neck. But they have Mother of Pearl inlays, which is cool. Um, but I, I'm I'm a dad at heart, you know what I mean? I kind of like the old-school guitars, I guess. And I figured that out through trial and error. Speaking of not-dad guitars, <laughs> Gibson is crazy for doing this. Look at this thing. Like a sparkly bourbon or a sparkly blueberry burst with a floyd dude les paul axis look at this thing man black sparkle top finish they're calling it black it looks blue to me i you know who knows what that really means but that is gorgeous dude <laughs> that is so wild looking man it's almost six thousand dollars um <laughs> it's insane oh man who's buying that dude who's playing this guitar this is crazy dude who has like 5,600 bucks just laying around today? Like, you know what? I'm going to get a Les Paul Axis with like a sparkly blue burst finish. <laughs> Who is that? I want to meet that person. This is a cool guitar. I'm a big fan of the 54 model of the Les Paul. For those of you who don't know, the 54 um, just came as it is right here. Just like a rat tail piece with some P90s. 
Um, again, Jared James Nichols has a gold top that survived the tornado. He also has a red one too. Um, but I really, really love this, this simplicity. And again, <laughs> going back to the man, Jared, his signature guitar has just a single P90 and a rap tail. And I'm a huge fan of that aesthetic and sound and playability. It just feels a little bit different. And um, I'm really on the hunt to see if I can find a 54 of my own, but probably not because they're way expensive. The real deal and the reissues. So like I'm trying to figure out like maybe I could like mod something. So, you know, to get something close to that. I don't know. But anyway, 4,100 bucks, really gorgeous top, gorgeous guitar. I think it has a curly top. Yep, curly maple top. That's the uh, the mod there. Really, really gorgeous guitar, man. But 4,100 bucks. Look at this SG, man. $4,600. This is a 2020 SG standard. Fat neck, three pickup, has a sparkly burgundy finish. So this isn't even a custom, it says. It says this is a standard. And the standards are 1500 bucks. So now you're going from 1500 to 4600 because of the finish. The finish is cool. I mean, it looks like a, I don't know, like a sports car. And then it's got like a P94 in the middle. Yep, P94 in the middle. And a stinger. All right, I mean, it's got a stinger. That's cool, right? Stingers are cool, dude. I like stingers. Look at that. But is it worth that price tag? To somebody it is, obviously, because these things are selling like crazy. And then last but not least, I feel like we've seen this one, but I don't know if we have or not. Um, I'm a big fan of gold tops. Mark Morton has a gold top. Jared has a gold top. I really, really dig gold tops anymore, man. Um, and I think this one is reasonably reasonably priced, excuse me. The mods are the different pickups, MH, MHS and MHS2. Um, and I think that's it, yeah. So 50 standard pickup swap. That's all it is. And they're taking off 150 bucks or 250 bucks for you. So again, I think that makes sense. There's some standards out here that really, really, um, you know, make sense. They're not like upcharging. They're giving you a discount when they change the pickups and it looks like they can put on a black tip switch as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Color of the knobs. Ah, the blacked out knobs too. So they kind of blacked that out a little bit. So to me, that makes sense. But all in all, everybody, man, you know, do I have any extra cash. I have thousands of dollars laying around, not particularly at this point in time in my life, <laughs> but uh, these are just fun to just geek out and just check them out, man. Gibson's crazy for making that blue Les Paul Access. That is such a wild guitar. I love it, man. But there's some out here that really, really do make sense. The uh, Gold Top Standard, the Cherry Burst Standard, the V, those all make sense to me. And they're really cool guitars, man. Um, some of them, like the custom shop stuff is really, really expensive, but Hey man, you know, like I said a couple times, people are buying these things and uh, they're worth that to somebody. So congrats to whoever picks these up, man. So everybody, I'm gonna get out of here. Those are my thoughts. What do you think of the mod collection this week? What do you guys think of all these guitars? Leave all your thoughts down below and I'll meet you down below in the comments and we'll mix it up, okay? So if you're brand new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I'm out of here. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay metal. I'll see you guys next time. Later.